Now, I may need this stool because I have two pinched nerves in my lower back. And I had some breakthrough for a season. And um, then when we moved, I picked up too many boxes. And I guess the progress I had made was uh, interrupted. And uh, the more I sit and travel, the worse it gets. So it's flared up right now, and the pain goes down my sciatic nerve. And uh, if you've never experienced that, there's really no way to describe it. It feels like, for me, someone has a dagger in my gluteus maximus. <laughs> so I may sit on this stool a little bit today while I teach you or lean on the podium here to keep from tensing up that muscle that grabs it. And what a great place to be to get healed. Amen. I'm trusting the Lord for a complete healing, a recreation of my discs. <clears throat> And uh, sometimes I limp through the airports, and yesterday I had to get a wheelchair to get me from the gate. It was hurting so badly, but I'm saying all that just to say to you, I'm here. Yeah. And he ain't going to stop me. <clears throat> nor is my back that I've abused, but I'm going to get healed anyway. All right. What a great word. And, you know, he usually doesn't do all this personal stuff and prophesying to people and churches. Chuck usually stays really focused on the whole region and the nation. Obviously, he's doing that here because God is doing something here that is for more than this place. It is for this region and nation. And so the words are powerful and very significant. I've got so many directions. I want to go up here. I'm not sure what to do. Let me read you a few statements that have been made here in California on this trip. And then uh, comment, maybe move into some teaching uh, for a few minutes about it. But but Chuck has said prophetically, and I think he does this from the, Jew, from the Hebrew number system, this is the decade of the decree. Is that right? That's what the number means, this decade. Now just hear that. It's the decade of the decree. I, I heard the Lord say, he said to me, well, he said this through a prophet uh, to me in 1986. And I did not understand it at the time. He said, you will be a part of the fresh age of the Melchizedek order. The fresh age of the Melchizedek order. And I said, what's that? And he said, it was a guy named Chuck Flynn. He had a deep voice, prophesied like this, literally. I said, what's that mean? He said, well, I don't really know, brother. You're going to have to figure that out yourself. <laughs> the fresh age of the Melchizedek order. And I studied Melchizedek. I, I, it's a fascinating study, but one of the main things, one of the, one of the primary things that had to do with that word was the Lord showed me that Melchizedek was both a king and a priest. And he showed me that I began to study the whole teaching, and of course, as a type of Christ, who is the king and the priest, and then he says to us, we are a kingdom of priests. And we are a royal priesthood. So we, we have the kingly anointing of Jesus, but we have the priestly anointing of Jesus. And the priestly anointing goes this way. We offer up requests, incense, worship, praise. But as the kingly anointing, or in the kingly anointing, we decree. The kingly anointing is the ecclesia. The, the, the priestly anointing would be the bride. Now, let, let me back up and say, how many of you know ecclesia means not a building, or a service. How many of you know ecclesia is a word that was, that was a governmental term? Do you know that here? When Jesus said, I'll build my church, my ecclesia, he wasn't saying I'll build a building, an organization, a 501c3, or I'll build a congregation. So words like congregation, fellowship, church, uh, church bride, family of God, those are not synonymous. They are talking about the same people, but they don't mean the same thing. Let me give you an example. My wife 
is the is the manager of our of our ministry. She's the CEO, COO, manager, administrator. She does everything so that all I have to do is travel, speak, and write. So she's also my friend. She's a grandmother. She's an aunt. She's a friend. She's a sister. But if she were here right now, and I introduced her as my administrator, it would be a long ride to the airport. <laughs> if you think my sciatic hurts, <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, that feels better. Because even though she's both, they don't mean the same thing. So even though we're the bride of Christ and we're the family of God and we're the body of Christ, that's not what Jesus was talking about when he said, I'll build my church. He said, I'll build my legislature. I will build my government. My kingdom will have a government on earth and I will give my government keys the keys of my kingdom or authority, and they'll have the ability to bind and loosen. Those are governmental terms. Those are judicial terms that mean legally binding and legally dissolving a contract. You will be my legislative people and the gates or government of hell will not prevail against you. My government will prevail over the government. Now we haven't done that very well in the past, but we are progressing to the point in this reconstituting of things God is doing that we talked about last night, that the ecclesia is coming into a greater and greater understanding that we have more authority than the powers of darkness. We have more authority than principalities. And we can offer up as priests, but we can decree as royal priesthood and kings. 